In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at which is better, film photography or digital? Have you ever wondered if film photography is better than digital photography or vice versa? However, does it even matter because the camera is simply a recording device in the hands of a photographer with a creative eye? Over the last 12 months, I've received many questions related to my experiences with medium format film and why I started using medium format digital, what I think of the two mediums, and when will I be using film again? So I thought I would wrap all this up in one video that touches on what I think of each camera, and I will tell you why I think the camera is just a tool that I use for my creative projects. So to start with, and for context purposes, I will share with you my experiences in using medium format film and digital cameras. I've been using medium format cameras since 2019. I started with the Mamiya 7. I then moved to the Hasselblad 503CW because I love the six by six square format aspect ratio. I then moved to the Mamiya 6 because it's more travel friendly. My choice to use film might seem a bit backwards because it's an older photography format. However, I saw it as an opportunity to gain a deeper understanding of photography. I have traveled all over the North Island of New Zealand with these film cameras, especially this one, to work on my projects. For example, this book right here, this book has been created by me using medium format film. And while we're talking about this book, this is my first book. All the photos, like I've just said in here, have been made with film photography, medium format film, They've all been scanned by me. It's going live on Kickstarter soon. The launch is on the 13th of August. Head over to Kickstarter. I'll leave a link in the description section down below. Sign up to be notified when this book goes live. And yeah, I'm looking forward to showing this to you. I hope you like it. I really want you to see it. And yeah, there'll be more about this book later. Let's continue with this video. In 2021, I decided to focus on my photography full time and I wanted to travel more. I know that film photography can be difficult to travel with because it's a very slow process. There can be many weeks between taking a photo and seeing it on my computer screen. So I decided to start using a medium format digital camera, which is this one here. Many of you have seen this. This is the Fujifilm GFX 50S2. Awesome camera, we'll talk more about this in a second. If we compare the technical merits of medium format film versus modern day digital cameras in isolation, the digital camera is far superior and it would be ridiculous for me to even suggest otherwise. If we compare image quality, the only way film can outperform digital is with an accurate exposure and focus and with digitalization of the film or a darkroom print with a drum scanner. Unless you shoot in large format, then it gets a bit more easier with just like a simple flatbed scanner. But anyway, all of this does not mean that one of them Film or digital is the best camera for you, and I'll explain why. Film is slow and there is no instant feedback. It will highlight your creative and technical strengths and weaknesses very quickly. You have to build experience and rely on your confidence when you're shooting film to get great images. Film and developing it is expensive. The cameras are old, parts and repairs are hard to find. To get good quality images, you have to buy the best lenses and mint condition on eBay is really expensive. However, some film cameras hold or increase in value. Film is not ideal for traveling photographers because it is slow and airport security scanning can damage the film. The digital camera is more efficient and it has what I would describe as less risk. The upfront cost is high. It's easy to check previews, but it's not necessarily required unless you're shooting at slow shutter speeds. In my experience with the Fujifilm, GFX. The RAW files are better quality and they're quicker to edit because as soon as you get them off your camera, you can edit them straight away. Question, what are your thoughts on film versus digital and which is better and why? Please leave a comment down below. I'd really like to hear your thoughts on this. So which do I think is better? Well, I think the digital camera is better for me whilst I'm traveling lots and trying to establish my photography business. The cost and risk of film doesn't make sense for me unless I need film on a project for a specific reason. But that does not mean that digital is better for you. Before you buy into a digital medium format system, I think it's essential that you are producing photographs that you are happy with and with your current camera system. 
Before you buy a digital medium format camera, I think it's really important that you craft your mind's eye into something that you like. You have to transition your photography from simply recording the scene into something more artistic and creative, like abstracting the scene with a wider creative vision. And the medium format digital camera will not give this to you. I'll tell you a quick story about a photographer that came to see me not that long ago. And he was complaining about his imagery and he went on to blame his camera. I think he had a Canon, a high-end Canon at the time. And he went on to say that he wholeheartedly believed that by investing in a medium format digital camera, this would fix that problem for him. Like somehow like the medium format camera had some wizardry that would produce a, a better photo. And I said to him, I said, look mate, you know, if you want to get better photos, invest in your money in a medium format digital camera is probably not the best way to go because it's not going to give that to you. But he didn't take that advice on board anyway. And he went on and bought the camera. And then I got a message again, basically saying that he's still struggling and the camera wasn't giving him what he wanted and he was still unhappy with his photos. So you see, the thing is, any camera is simply a recording device without the creativity input from you. If you have the mindset that you are not getting the photos you want because of your camera, I recommend you have a think about the purpose of your photography. Spend some time thinking about your creativity skills because I think you will find that your money will be better spent on learning how to develop your mind's eye by going on workshops, having mentoring sessions, buying inspirational books and traveling to new places. If you are the sort of person that is not afraid of failure and can learn from your own mistakes, a medium format film camera or any film camera will help you become a better photographer. You will develop a better understanding of exposure and depth of field, plus working with film is expensive and it will force you to think about things differently. Your compositions will improve quicker. Film photography is a slow process because you do not get to see your photos until your film has been developed. Your mistakes are only visible after you have left your photography location. So as you make these mistakes, you learn about them later and you start to think about what you need to do differently before your next photography trip. Because of this, I'm convinced that my technical and creative knowledge of photography would not be what it is today. Film photography will help build your confidence in your photography. I can absolutely guarantee that if you can master film photography. When I started to use my digital camera, it took some time you know, to get comfortable with how my camera worked. However, I very quickly started to appreciate its technology. And I find that I am photographing more portfolio photos every time I use it. But this is because I have a deeper understanding of photography, which I've learned from using film. I've worked with medium format film cameras for the past three years to make this book. This book is a testimony to my film photography and I'm really proud of this book. You see, the thing is, I want you to have the same understanding. So if you do not have any experience in using a film camera, then I recommend you go out and buy a cheap one or even buy a good one and just give it a go because I can guarantee it's gonna help you. Then start to learn how to use it. It will teach you things that today's digital cameras automate. If you can make great photos with a film camera, then your digital work will absolutely be better and it will be more efficient, I can guarantee it. You know, recently I've had questions about when I will be using my film camera again, and people have told me that they are unsubscribing to my channel because I'm using a digital camera. Look, I respect that, that's what you wanna do, but you know, I'm an artist and I, I think I should be free to use the tools that I need for my projects. But I've also had questions from people, you know, saying what settings are you using for that camera, what lens are you using, etc. And you know, sometimes I kind of feel like that people believe that the camera is more important than the photographer. That the camera and its lens and settings somehow produce these pleasing results all on their own. When we buy cameras, we go through the process of unpacking it and reading the manual and becoming familiar with how we use it. You know, every camera manual that I have read includes technical information about the camera and it also includes technical illustrations on how to navigate the camera. But you see, the thing is, camera manuals do not offer any creative guidance. As photographers, 
we have to discover the difference between simply recording the scene and transforming that into something more creative and artistic like abstracting the scene with a wider creative vision and we have to learn all of that on ourselves and you know the thing is and this is normal it takes time to realize this for the first few years of your creative journey when you are not seeing the results you hope for it's normal to blame the camera or the settings you have used eventually your reflection turns onto yourself you will start to reflect on how you have used the camera or even if you had a good creative vision for your photos from the start and if your photos are even aligned with that creative vision eventually your photography will transition from simply recording the scene into abstracting it with a wider creative vision my creative visions remain the same regardless of the camera i use and i want you to start thinking the same way I want you to be more than just a photographer because in today's world, everyone carries a smartphone that is capable of taking good photos and most people consider themselves a photographer. So ask yourself, how can you set yourself apart from anyone with a smartphone? Leave a comment below. I'd really like to hear your thoughts on this. And you know, when it comes to choosing which camera I'm gonna use, it really depends on the project. I identify the project first, and then I decide on how I'm going to do it. And then I pick the appropriate tools. Sometimes these projects happen by accident. For example, I've been really enjoying the panoramic aspect ratio in this camera. And I'm currently going around New Zealand, photographing New Zealand landscape in panoramic mode. And I fully intend on releasing a panoramic book next year. And I'm really excited to show that to you. I've got another project that I'm developing. Um, that's about abstract landscapes, but I don't yet know how I'm going to deliver this project or how it will unfold, but it's just something that I've got in the pipeline. And yeah, I want you to start thinking the same way. I want you to have creative visions that include many photos that tell a story that you can share with other people, because really, for me, that, that is what photography is all about. And you know, the important thing is that all this will help you become a better photographer because your work will start having more meaning and it will stand out from the other photographers because it will tell a wider story and it will be more unique to you. In terms of this YouTube channel, I plan to transition its content away from photography equipment into discussions like this about creative visions, about the creative sides of photography, about the why in photography, about the purpose, and even maybe going into you know the business aspects of photography. You may remember that I ran a survey on my channel a few months ago to help me understand my audience. And by the way, thank you to everyone who responded to that. From that survey, I can say that 75% of you have been using your cameras for more than five years. And some of you are even working in photography professionally. This means that 75% of you already know how to use the technical features in your camera. And this is great for me because I do not need to focus my content on the technical aspects of photography. And you know, there's so many other photographers that do that better than me and who are passionate about that. And you know, deep down, I really don't care about it. I really do not care about the cameras, the technical things, the lenses. What really excites me is the creativity and the why of photography and the passion behind that. And that's really what I wanna talk about on this channel. So stay tuned for my next video which will be a discussion on the difference between being a photographer versus a visionary photographer. So back to the book. Really excited about this book. Again, please go over to Kickstarter and sign up to be notified when this book comes out. That'll be greatly appreciated. It comes out on the 13th of August and I will be talking more about the specs of this book in a future video. Thank you very much. And that's it for today's video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I really hope you found this discussion interesting. Please extend your thoughts on this discussion, film versus digital, into the comments down below. I'd really like to hear your thoughts on it. Bye for now. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. See you soon.